Hey, what is going on, crypto people? It is the Crypto Siege with another day in the life and the crazy life that is a digital asset space group. Morning, happy Friday to each and every one of you. It's June 17. Recording is uh, kind of this recording is 10 o'clock a.m. Central Time. <laughs> I hope you're, um, this is a very, very interesting time to be an early adopter in this new asset class. It's the digital asset space. I got to tell you that word on the street is, Celsius is being attacked by the mafia, quote unquote. Yeah, three, four, five law firms, not law firms, uh, VC firms, yeah, on the attack because Celsius is looking out for its depositors. Yeah, that's the word on the street. So interesting stuff. That's why all the short selling is going on for the sell token. That's one of the reasons. Uh, interesting stuff. So we'll get into that. We're gonna we're gonna clear up this whole thing about the loans. If you happen to be uh, on Celsius and you have a loan, we're gonna clear that up. Got some clarification. So we got that all figured out for sure. And uh, look, Kevin O'Leary is saying he thinks Celsius is gonna go to zero. We'll see from Shark Tank. We shall see um, how that goes. Also, three hours capital. We're gonna cover that um, as well because they are, um, yeah, they are in a lot of trouble. And these VC firms get into this space. It was a reason why Alice Mashensky did not want to do business with these VC firms and get into the space and cause them some stuff. Digital Assets Daily is, uh, what should I say? He understands the bigger picture with Celsius. He's not blaming Celsius at all. He understands the real deal. Unfortunately, some people out there who are just not getting the real deal. So we'll cover that um, as well. John Deaton is in the news for sure. The SEC gets called out big time by a senator, Senator Haggerty, called them out big time and how they were trying to hoodwink and then boozle some people with these little proposals that they come out with and they try to disguise or mask their real intention. We're going to cover that. The market is doing what the market does. Interesting stuff, guys. Listen, guys, this is your XRP Ripple daily news in around zero to 10 minutes. So let's do it. Gosh, oh gosh, the total cryptocurrency market cap is not looking great. Oh, I think I'm going to, uh, in addition, I forgot to mention this. I'm going to let you hear from my guy on this market, what's going on with Bitcoin in, in the digital asset space for sure. Look, the total cryptocurrency market cap is at uh, $931 billion. The Bitcoin dominance continues to go down. It's at 42.1%. Shout out to Blockchain Backer for noting this and paying close attention to this Bitcoin and Ethereum dominance. Bitcoin dominance is going down. What's the price of Bitcoin going down? It's very interesting. So anyway, the total cryptocurrency market cap, again, $931 billion, down from $3 trillion at one time. Bitcoin is at $20,637. It's down 31% on a seven day. Ethereum is at $1,080. It's down 39% on the seven day. XRP is at 32 cents. I think it's interesting. XRP is, you know, could, you know, continue to hot on hold there uh, with all things considered, with the market madness, with the SEC lawsuit. I think it's very, very, it says a lot of things, how strong it is there. But it's at 32 cents currently. Lots of double figure reds in the market. Uh, yeah, lots of double figure reds in this freaking market. And so, yeah, so the word on the street is ultimately VC firms in a space over leveraged, but they, they, they were acting as treasuries for a lot of prominent uh blockchains one of them for example being ave for example yeah so that's the challenge when you let that vc money in the space that is the challenge and that is what's going on and i'm going to show you the word on the street and why celsius is in fact being attacked in fact being uh, attacked not some nefarious thing, not some scammers, not Alice Mashinsky acting as a scammer. They're being attacked. That is the word on the street. So there it is, guys. The market is, again, doing what the market does, man. Just red, 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 reds everywhere you freaking turn. There is a freaking red. 
Yeah, and we all got the word on the street about the Digital Euro, um, Digital Pound Foundation Circle announces a full reserve Euro backed stable coin. That is absolutely outstanding news for Circle. Shout out for them for continuing to work, work hard, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, kind of keep focused with the blinders on Euro stable coin. <laughs> Circle, full of reserve, good for them. So here's the deal. Now I've got some confirmation. This. I want to go over this. This is called. This is from the real plan C, uh, part one, the real Celsius story. Please retweet hashtag crypto and Bitcoin. So here it is here. It says when the USC DPEG started, there was a plan. There was a plan to make a deal with Luna and save the peg. Let us not forget Mike Novogratz and Galaxy Digital. Let us not forget Mike Novogratz and Galaxy Digital, okay? Someone told all the USC whales not to sell and that there was no danger of UST failing because there was a plan to save the peg. Celsius sold to protect their community. Alameda was one of these five to seven wallets just to get, you know, of USC, so was Celsius. One of these top five to seven whales, major wallets. Sam says here, starting to see a little chat about this. So just to quell it before it gets worse, Alameda hasn't been selling USC and doesn't have any particular plan to do so. They were one of those five to seven wallets. The details I've been, I have heard, but not been be final. Jump, Celsius, and Jane Street committed already. Amita, not yet. Targeting $1 billion and $1.5 billion raised. This was the, you know, this confirms the people, right? Uh, lunar spot one year, lock, and all that kind of stuff. One thing to keep in mind is that this deal is not closed yet and is still in active negotiations. The terms now might be different. Obviously, some parties could still decommit. Would expect an announcement from LFG in the next two days. And, and impressive interest is this high. Closing, close to announcing recovery plan, hang tight, right? And so, again, Celsius was like, yeah, we can't take a chance on that. It's starting to depeg. We have to get out. We got it, right? Celsius already told you that they got out, right? On the AMAs that they got out, right? But Alameda mm, planning on hanging in there, right? For the avoidance of doubt, Celsius was not, and it, it was not, and is not involved in any Luna bailout, which was essentially trying to do something to help bring that peg back. Stablecoin rescue plan gets the cold shoulder from big investors. Celsius got out of the door first. Suffered the, suffered, the, suffered the lowest losses and didn't want any part of the bailout. Stuck holding the UST and locked Luna bags, losing hundreds of millions of dollars each were Alameda, Three Arrows Capital, Galaxy Digital and Jump Digital. You got Alameda, you got in parentheses here, FTX. Just understand uh, that the cell token has been constructively and coordinated, shorted, and it's been going on prior to this whole Luna thing as well. All right, so ju just prior to the loan thing. So um, Jump Capital and Three Arrows Capital bought a billion dollars of Luna unlocked literally over four years. It says here on February 22nd, the worst, the worst kept secret in altcoin deal making is finally out. A who's who of crypto. Players led by Jump and Three Hours Capital bought a billion of the Luna from the Luna Foundation Guard. A billion. 
I'm going to show you what Three Hours Capital did in addition to this. After this, they got them in some major trouble. Jump Capital wrote a very detailed 18 minute report on what caused the DPEG. What caused the DPEG, right? Terrorist Devon woes prompted in part by Celsius network activities. Yep, getting out. This, this wording is horrible. Now, this is again a competition for this is the CEO of, um, I forget the name of his thing here, but it's, it's competition. He says, La Familia Celsius turned against them by front running them, them during the USC exit. Now they are coming after Celsius. You got to be very, very careful of the wording here. Celsius didn't turn against anyone. They said, yeah, nope, we're not going to, we're not going to try to participate. If it's the peg is lost, we're not taking chances. We have a community to represent. So we're out. The other four stayed. That's what happened. Now they are coming. That is what allegedly happened. And I'm going to get more and more. I'm going to share with you more and more confirmation. More and more confirmation. Now they are coming after Celsius. Motive Celsius competitor. Voyager Digital secures 75 million strategic investment from Alameda, one of the five wallets, largest whale wallets. Voyager Digital raises 60 million in private placement led by Alameda. Just pay attention to that. track record in this space. The VC firm is big and pretty massive. Get your popcorn ready. Alameda Research manipulates Wave's price and organizes FUD campaigns to trigger panic selling. Gotta understand what the big boys plan, how they operate. It's not, it's not a, a, a man who's been in a business for five years paying hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in rewards to retail investors. You know, when things go bad, everyone wants to jump on the bad, on the bad bandwagon. But they forget the hundreds of millions of dollars in rewards paid to retail investors, accredited and non-accredited. They forget about that. How much in rewards did you get from Alameda Research? How much in rewards did you get from Digital Galaxy? <sighs> Dylan McClare says, Operation Liquidate Celsius. I believe Dylan is part of a competition uh, competitor called Swan BTC. Don't quote me on that, but this was a tweet. Make no mistake. It says here, transparent markers, transparent markets bring the sharks. And they're hunting for li liquidation levels. Make no mistake, some of the biggest industry players are gunning for other market participants to become forced sellers. This is merely speculation, but I don't think it's a coincidence that they dump masses amount of stake E all at once. As it became known, Celsius was stuck with the st state E. They couldn't get out of it. The, 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 you know, the one-to-one -one wasn't a one-to-one. -one. 
is significantly um, less ETH than it was to stake ETH. Was that a, you could we could argue that was a bad decision to put up that much ETH to make the stake ETH 2.0 crap happen. One could argue that, right? But the intention was to help, right? Stake ETH was supposed to help a lot of people invested in Ethereum. They were short the ETH. They didn't have it. Celsius put the ETH up to help make that happen. And it was tens and tens of thousands of ETH. You can argue in Monday morning quarterback and say that was a wrong move. But ultimately, the challenges that are going on now with Celsius, it seems very, very apparent, is because of a coordinated attack. Basically, revenge trading is what they call it. Alameda Research. Alameda Research's recent alleged stake ETH sell-off put Celsius Network in trouble. Someone, Rand Nooner says this, someone sent our group is trying hard to liquidate Celsius here. Uh, here is the liquidate Celsius. Here is where we are. Celsius just posted additional 1,501 BTC as collateral. Total BTC in the vault, 23. New liquidation price, 17 to 11. Current price, 21,000, 37,000. Bitcoin just sent to exchanges total today, 130K. Someone or group is trying hard to liquidate Celsius. Just saying. Well, it's not what Celsius is trying to do to you and I as retail investors. It's what those firms, VC, the nastiness of VC firms are trying to do. This is from the DeFi Edge. At the DeFi Edge, one of the largest crypto venture capital firms, three hours capital, uh, they're becoming insolvent with potentially 18 point billion on the management. This could be catastrophic for crypto. Let me see. I got to make sure I make a note here on something here. Because I believe they might be, uh, three hours might be one of the five, along with, um, yep, three hours capital. Again, Celsius, uh, no, we're out. The other four, like Alameda, Three Arrows Capital, Galaxy Digital, Jump Capital. I'll say it again, Three Arrows Capital. One of the largest crypto firm, capital firms, Three Arrows Capitals, they're becoming insolvent with potentially 18 billion on the management. This could be catastrophic for crypto. And this might be the firm because, you know, Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank is in the know. He's saying the Celsius will go to zero. He's saying something bigger than that is going to happen. Someone bigger than Celsius. And, and 18 billion, I think is slightly higher than Celsius because I think Celsius was somewhere between 10 to 13 billion valuation and 3 billion in assets under management. This is three hours, uh, this is a uh, three hours capital with 18 billion on the management. Yeah, so here's a timeline for what's going on and the possible consequences. Who is three hours capital? I'll refer to them as 3AC, one of the largest crypto focused venture capital firms in the world. Started by high school classmates, Zeus, Yusu and Kyle's Davies, his account is suspended, interestingly enough. <laughs> in 2012, initially based in Singapore, they've recently moved to Dubai. Got to wonder why. Some of the best investments include Ave, uh, includes Avalanche, Near Protocol, Ave, Durabit, Starkware, Terra, Luna, and Axie Infinity. 
These assets on the management were estimated to be between 10 and 18 billion. A top five VC firm, their power and influence went far in the industry. Three Arrows Capital buys 660 million of ETH since the billionaire founder abandoned Ethereum. Let me tell you a little bit of the thing that uh, one of the CEOs at Three Hours Capital is infamous for doing, PSYOPs and mind games. Zoo is influential with an audience of 560,000 on Twitter. He, he was also known for playing plenty of mind games, parentheses, PSYOPs, with his audience. For example, he created a fudding Ethereum. For example, he created a thread fudding Ethereum. Which caused the price to drop. Co founder of Three Hour Capital. And then he purchased Ethereum afterwards at a lower price. He was a huge proponent of the super cycle theory. In February 21, February of uh, 2021, he projected that the price of Bitcoin would reach 2.5 million. On an episode of Up Only, a few weeks ago, he announced that his thesis on a super cycle was wrong. Three Arrows Capital back Terra Luna before the collapse last month. Three Arrows Capital spent $560 million to buy Lock Luna. It's now worth roughly $670. There is speculation that the massive losses of Luna caused them to use more leverage to earn it back, also known as revenge trading. The dangers of leverage, there are three ways a smart person can go broke, look for ladies and leverage. Token prices have crashed over the past few weeks. If your collateral value is lowering, you're at risk of liquidation. How liquid is 3AC? We know 3AC has made some fantastic investments, but many of the tokens are locked and they're illiquid for years. So if they're getting margin called, it will be tough to repay the loans if they don't have the liquidity available. The first signs of insolvency, Degen Trading claims 3 hour, three AC borrows from every major lender and they're at risk of being liquidated on many of their positions. Rumors of the liquidation, rumors started swelling that 3AC was about to be liquidated against this $264 million ETH position. Nansen confirmed that the wallet was not tagged as 3AC. Apparently their UI was a bug that caused the poster to see it as 3AC. Confirmation of trouble at this point, people are confused. Is there uh, trouble at 3AC or are people spreading fud about the firm? Well, Zoo wrote a crypto tweet the other day hinting that there's trouble at 3AC. This is on June 14th from the CEO. We had a process of communicating with relevant parties and fully committed to working this out. June 14th, co founder of Three Hours Capital. Uh, go on from here from the DeFi Edge. I know it was you, Zoo. You broke my heart. State ETH price has been having some issues. Everyone assumed it was Celsius that was dumping their state ETH. It looks like it was 3AC doing the dumping. This guy here, Moon, that Moon Overlord says people think Celsius is the biggest state, is the biggest state ETH dumper, but it's 3AC, three arrows capital. And it isn't relatively close. They are dumping on every account and seed round address they have. Most looks like it's going to pay back debts and outstanding borrows that they have. There's smoke, there's fire, right? An insider's account where there's smoke, there's fire. Danny's firm works closely with Three Hours Capital. 
they noticed that a million dollars was missing from their accounts. Apparently, the founders are ghosting people, the founders at Three Arrows Capital. And Three Arrows Capital is getting liquidated everywhere. Now we're starting to see the initial consensus to come in. Finblocks, a CFI company, is pausing reward distributions because of Three Arrows Capital's volatility. 3AC is an investor in Finbox, pausing the rewards distribution. Celsius did not stop the rewards distribution. To our value customers, says Finbox. We have been closely monitoring market conditions and numerous media reports regarding a prominent institutional borrower. Three Hours Capital, who is also an investor in Finblocks. We have been cooperating with uh, over eight partners and protocols, including Three Hours Capital, to generate yields and spread the risk as evenly as possible based on currently available information and our priority to maintain the integrity of the platform. We have decided to take the following actions while pursuing all available options. Where's the tweets about Finblocks and the CEO and the scammers? running away with your money, where are those tweets? We have decided to take the following actions while pursuing available options to evaluate the effect of 3AC on liquidity and ensure a fair treatment of all users to evaluate the effect of three hours capital on the liquidity and ensure a fair treatment of all users and ensure a fair treatment of all user assets in the system. Pause reward distributions on the Finbox platform for all users. They changed the withdrawal limits, $500 equivalent per day up to a maximum of $1,500 equivalent per month for all level of users. Delay referral program and deposit rewards, disable creation, right, of addresses and stuff. So this is what they decided to do to deal with the liquidity issues that they're having caused in large part by three hours capital. Celsius did some other things, but the intent was not to scam people and harm people. The intent is to try to get through the liquidity issue. That's the intent. because of circumstances ultimately beyond their control. So let's watch out for unlocks. Miles' suggestions, keeping an eye out for unlock. This is Miles Ducher. If Three Arrows Capital is having financial issues, then you can assume they will sell their tokens at the first opportunities, unlocks, right? Because, um, you know, these venture capital firms get involved with these different platforms. Some of these platforms will, you know, you know, some will have 30 day lockouts, some, some will have three year lockouts, 18 month lo uh, uh, lockups, rather, lockups. So we got to look for the unlock timeframes of these platforms here for the VCs and see when that's going to begin to happen, right? Keep an eye on these assets. These are 3AC's primary holdings. They'll presumably look to dump during upcoming unlocks. So that's the real world. That's the real world. The, the, the real world of VC firms, the, re, the real world, world of um, um, you know, borrowing and putting the assets up as collateral, blah, blah, blah. All of that kind of stuff is the real, real world. And then there is also the fact that these VC firms wrote the playbook for short selling and trying to run companies to the ground. I've been a part of this, our personal life outside of crypto. Yeah, you know, I had stock in the company that was being short sold. for no reason.
VC firms can get together and say, hey, look, let's do the, let's break out the playbook and try to short sell this company. We'll do the FUD, we'll put this FUD out, we'll get, you know, we'll get the crypto Twitter, and we'll 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 uh we'll leverage the newbies that have no idea of the real world. We'll spread this FUD, we'll get the newbies who have no idea of the real world to jump on FUD bandwagons, and we're gonna shut, we're gonna short this crypto. We're gonna short the stock, we're gonna short this crypto. That's what happened to the sell token. And this is what's trying to happen. This is what is the attempt currently on Celsius Network. So some of you are being leveraged as newbies in this space who don't understand the playbook for VC firms. And you're jumping on the FUD bandwagons and you don't understand the real deal. How can you go from a company paying hundreds of millions of dollars, the first company to offer yield ever to you as a retail best investor to give you money on your money when the banks, in the which are the real scammers, the banks and the banking regulators who are the real scammers won't give you a penny for your money. How can you, how can you turn on a company and or if you will, that said, no, we'll figure out a way to get you some yield for your money hundreds of millions of dollars in five years, or roughly five years. And how can you turn on them and then jump on the bandwagon of a VC firm, which is what you're doing, who are in the business of shorting companies and trying to run them into the ground. So I recommend you take caution in jumping on the FUD bandwagon and, and possibly look to support people who have been looking out for you. All right, guys, look, I think I am going to wrap that up. I hope I, the message is pretty clear. Here's from one from Blackmore at 21 Blackie. Who would have thought it that out of all the cryptos in the space, the sell token has become a weapon of war between the CEO, crypto mafia, and the masses. It's absolutely mental. The mafia have come for Celsius juggler before trade five. In other words, VC firms in crypto came after Celsius before traditional finance. Now that's saying something. Indeed it is. I'm going to let you hear uh, from my guy here. I forgot this up on the Bitcoin markets. Take a listen to my guy, Gareth Salloway and uh, Greg Dickerson. Be careful of the people you listen to in the crypto markets in terms of TA. Be very, very careful. Come on, laptop. If you guys know what this challenge is with this spinning thing, if you think it's something um, in addition to the internet, let me know. Now, I'm wondering if we're going into a similar pattern now, uh, maybe 30 days waiting for the next, you know, Fed rate hike where, you know, it kind of does the same thing, grinds it out, gets everybody super bullish. And then you get the, you get the Fed, you know, hiking rates and then bam, you get that next level down. Yeah. And, and I agree with you. I think, I think it'll be shorter this time. What we usually see psychologically from market participants participants is that once they've been fooled once they'll, they'll 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 see the bounce maybe some will jump on but not as many and therefore when it rolls over there just aren't as many buyers to support it so i think i think you're right on that is that you could see a month but unlikely it'll be the same length of time as the last one and what we know about markets and this is this is just something from studying charts is that markets tend to like threes right so three bar surges before a chart pauses um, you know, things like that. And so what, what you can see here on the chart of Bitcoin is this, this was your initial move down. This is your secondary move down, right? And then maybe again, we get that sideways like this, and then you get your final flush out, whether it's to my 12,000 target, maybe it goes below, I'm not sure, but, but I'm relatively confident that we'll at least go below 20,000. 
how much lower I think again, 12,000 could be it, but we would get that three, one, two, kind of three. And the final third is really the, the one where people throw up their hands. And I would, I would just say this is that you have a lot of pain in the, in the crypto markets, but you don't, I wouldn't say people are giving up yet on Bitcoin. Right. And that's one of the notes that I look for is like when people finally throw up their hands and say, it's too much pain. I can't take it anymore that's the bottom right now you have oh my goodness this is a lot of pain but i still think it's going to go up so i'm going to buy more you know and that's and that's usually not the bottom so <laughs> yeah yeah there is a narrative out there that this is the buy level this is the generational buy level and yeah we haven't i don't think we've seen panic selling or capitulation yet i looked at um in a video yesterday you know i pointed out what you know march 2020 looked like what you know 2018 looked like what you know 2009 looked like you know where we had that final panic capitulation in those markets and yeah i'm with you we haven't seen that yet um we're not there yet so what so let's look at that chart again on bitcoin and and take a look at i think are you so are you looking at you know with that measured move on that third leg i mean i guess that's almost like an elliott wave five five countdown right ab you know one two three four five yeah yeah you could definitely look at it as as something like that as well 100 percent. so there's lots of kind of things that are congruent at, at the 12,000 level. The first one is the measured move this distance to this distance. If you map that same distance from here down, it gives you 12,000. So that would be that measured move. And then there are a few other things, right? 80 to 85 per correction in Bitcoin historically in its last cycles or it's past bear markets that puts you right around 12,000 as well. And then also, you know, there's even some other things like this pivot right here, right at 12,000. And you can see this one was where we bottomed out in 2019. We had a first move up, pulled back, then it hit again and finally broke out. So that tells you there's a technical level there as well, not just a measured move, not just the 80, 85% correction. And then even to take it one step further here, and this is just, you know, I just, I love just playing around with charts, right? So, so one of the things that I like to do is what I call parallels. And um, basically, it's just finding a parallel line with another level um, that matches up. So one of the things here, if we go to parallels, you can see that you, you draw this line through here, which again, if you extend it down, this has been the line that right here, see these lows, and this is what we just broke recently, right? So, yeah. so you have pivot low here, 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 and here, and then we finally broke it. We'll extend that out more. Let's do an extension out even more. What about with these lows, right? So these lows right from here, 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 and here, and look at the where that line is right now. It's kind of right around 12,000. Now, granted, it's gonna slow down a little bit below by the time price probably gets there in a month, two months or whatever. But I do think that parallels are very, very powerful in dictating price action where it's gonna find support and resistance. So, so just an interesting thing how this line again, parallel to here which is this one parallel there to there and then again if you match it up with the next significant pivot area here you get kind of that same area so yeah, anyways, hold, that, you know, hold that for a second yeah. so if you extend the back of that line back to 2021 little peak before the drop look at that yeah there you go that's right. interesting right there so so you know again that's the power of parallels and, and again I'm, I, i've started to use these in my trading more and more because i'm finding that they're more and more powerful they really and it's amazing because you know this line is parallel with this midpoint here which is parallel with here and then don't and and, and in all fairness i would almost guarantee that at some point in the future when we rally you'll have a, you'll have resistance if you connect here to this parallel it'll be like resistance up here wherever that line is at that point so just very cool stuff with parallels in terms of trading yeah it's really it's really interesting and you know right now i mean from a historical standpoint of bitcoin i mean it's still really where it should be in a traditional four-year cycle yeah uh, you know it reaches the peak every four years corrects you know goes into a two-year bear market starts its journey up so i mean from the peak was you know um what was that you know march april of 2021 that's really yeah. the cycle top uh where are we now we're about what 18 months into it i guess yeah yeah and, and again uh, it's historically from from the highs it's usually around 12 to 18 months um how far into it you know so so we are we're getting there my only issue is that you know one of the things that i've been talking about a little bit is that this is the first cycle in bitcoin bear cycle where you have high inflation, right? So starting in 2009, we didn't, that's when it started. We didn't have high inflation and this is the first period we do. And then also you have, this is the first period where the, the Federal Reserve 
has actually stopped printing and is kind of reversing the printing press, is trying to suck money out. And so you just have to be a little careful here because it's in, it's really uncharted territory for cryptocurrencies as a whole. I love long-term crypto, at least at least the big players like Bitcoin and Ethereum. But I do think that like this is the dot-com moment for cryptocurrencies. And I don't think that, you know, maybe 5% of cryptos will survive this. But what that also tells me is we have to go lower because there's still way too many nonsense coins out there that really don't have a big use case. Well, all right, guys. I hope that's my guy there. Really appreciate him for sure. The other guy on the on on the right, the older guy is Greg Dickerson. I you know I highly recommend that you check both of them out. You follow them on YouTube and whether what other kind of uh, what other kind of social media platforms that they have. Gaff is a really, really smart guy. He has a really, really, really he's, he's a former regular stocks guy, as far as trading, markets guy. Uh, and he just got into crypto. And uh, yeah, he's been really, really spot on on a lot of stuff. So, all right, guys, listen, that wraps up my XRP Ripple Daily News in around zero to 10 minutes. I am going to end this video like I do all of my videos and remind you guys of this. Old money doesn't want you to win they don't want us to win they would rather that we remain a cog in their perpetual wheel of trading our time for dollars they don't want us to play in the same playground that they play in where we allow our money to work for us this is our chance to win guys the digital asset space is our chance to win we are in the midst of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of man are you participating or are you standing on the sidelines? Here's what I do know, that the battle for you has already been fought and the victory is yours. Go get it.